recipe required, and tonight we're talking mini meatloaves. Now, mini mini meatloaves, at least my mini meatloaves, are really the same as the uh, as the big. So if you know that recipe, really nothing more to learn. All we're going to do is kind of shrink it down. I find that my friends, my family, and especially my kids really love these kind of mini foods. I do mini sliders and mini meatballs. You should check them out. And um, this version is um, it's both very cool, very cute, and frankly, if you have like a, a party, people think it's elegant when they see kind of a smaller version or a different version of what they're used to or what they're familiar with. We'll show you how to mix the meat, we'll bake it off. Side benefit here, since they're smaller, they cook a lot faster in the oven and so it uh, means less time for you in the kitchen. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and start our mini meatloaf actually on the stove. I start my mix on the stove with an onion and a couple cloves of garlic that I just kind of finely chopped. And I'm going to saute them off until um, the onion is sweated down, becomes translucent, a little bit, a little bit tender. That brings the flavors out of the onion, makes it all so nice and wonderful. A little bit of salt on the onion and garlic, a little bit of pepper. If you're not looking to brown anything, this will probably take seven or eight minutes over medium to medium high heat. You know, you don't have to pay a lot of attention. Just move it around every few minutes. Make sure it's not browning. Let it cool, then we're going to add it to our so meatloaf mix. So we've got mix. our meat for our mini meatloaf. I'm using half ground beef, half ground pork. I got a little bit under a pound there. And I'm going to add the onions that we cooked off. And these have cooled down just a little bit. You don't want to add them like smoking hot into the pan. And then what I'm going to do is hit it with a good amount of salt. Now you're seasoning, obviously, it's a, it's a pound of meat here. So you got to be pretty generous with the salt, pretty generous with the pepper. And then, um, you know, the other meatloaf ingredients, you can be pretty flexible on this. My kind of standard would be like half a cup of breadcrumbs, a couple eggs, a couple jiggers of the Worcestershire sauce. Parsley, I add frequently, but you know what? I had some green onions hanging out in the fridge that are going to go bad in a few days, so I figured why not add the green onions. And then um, really just, that's it. You can, like I said, you can be pretty creative. You can throw a lot of other things in here, other meats, other herbs, spices, whatever you want. I like getting in there with my hand and reach down, just mix it all up. If you got kids, some kids will love this part. Um, you want to get it all nicely integrated. And then once it's mixed together, just pull off a little tiny bit and cook it off and give it a taste. And that'll tell you if it's, um, if it's seasoned properly. If you need more salt, if you need more pepper, if you need more breadcrumbs, anything like that. Then we'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll form our mini meatloafs. Okay, so I know you're going to be shocked that the way to make a mini meatloaf is to make a mini meatloaf. We obviously made the full batch. You're not going to do that individually. But then just divide it up into um, you know, as big a portion as you want, frankly. These are probably 8 ounce pieces, maybe, maybe 9 or 10 ounces. Um, you can do individual portions. You can kind of do portions for two. Yeah, I like to line them up. If you got a, um, this is a non-stick pan. If your pan is stick, then you want to throw a little bit of oil down there. And just go ahead. The only key here is you really want to make them all about the same shape so that they cook the same time. I've got a um, oven preheating to uh, 400 degrees and we're going to pop them in until, because there's pork in here, we got to get it up to like 150 or so, 145, 150 um, internal temperature. Best thing to do is use a, um, a meat thermometer. If not, you know, you can kind of tell by feel. It's probably going to take about half an hour, 20 minutes to half an hour in the oven to get them all the way cooked through. And you want them, like I said, even. If you want to do things like drape a little bit of bacon over them, yummy, yummy. That's all absolutely awesome, absolutely acceptable. These are ready to go, so I'm going to pop them in. We'll come back Let's when they're done. Let's get started on our mushroom sauce. Now, I'm using this for meatloaf. It's going to be a um, maybe a non-traditional sauce. You know, the Campbell's tomato soup is pretty darn popular. It was in my house growing up. This is going to be really just very, very simple mushroom. A little bit of um, like shallots, some herbs, a little bit of uh, stock, and it's going to form this beautiful, wonderful sauce. Like I said, I'm using it for meatloaf, but no reason it couldn't be for a steak, chicken, whatever, whatever you want. Cook them down for about 15 minutes. Um, you don't need to move them a whole lot every few minutes. Come back, give them a little bit of a toss, and you're looking to get them uh, almost all the moisture out of there. This is going to be reduced by you know 60, 70 percent. 
so the mushrooms are kind of nice and golden brown. So after about 15 minutes or so, your mushrooms get really, really cooked down. I like them this far done. You can certainly stop it earlier. They'll be a little softer, a little more moisture left in there. I'm going to add a shallot that I diced as well as a uh, clove of garlic in there. I'm going to throw in a little bit of dried thyme. Now if you got fresh, all the better. You can also use other um, herbs in here, oregano, rosemary is absolutely awesome. Same kind of principle we've used um, a lot of times on sautéing. We're not looking for any browning of that shallot or garlic. We just want to make sure it gets softened, the, um, the flavors release a little bit. And then we're going to come back and add a little bit of flour to this. The pan looks a little bit, a little bit dry, so I'm going to add just a drizzle more olive oil. And the flour in that oil is going to form essentially a roux, which will eventually thicken with our, um, with our stock to form our sauce. Okay, so I've let my uh, mushroom, shallot, and garlic cook together until everything is wilted down. You don't want any browning on the onions, any burning. I'm going to add about two tablespoons, maybe two and a half tablespoons of um, flour to this. And like I said, that flour is going to mix with the oil. It's going to get kind of clumpy or it's going to get stiff. That's perfectly fine. We're essentially making a roux. That um, flour now, you've you got to turn the heat down to medium low. And just let the, um, let the flour cook for about five or six minutes. And that is going to um, take out the rawness of that flour um, and that bleh taste. And essentially just create kind of a little bit of a nutty aroma. More importantly, it's going to be the thickening agent when we pour our beef stock onto this. Let it reduce. It's going to come up and thicken into a nice, beautiful sauce. So after your um, flour is cooked down for five, six, seven minutes, you can go ahead and add in beef stock, chicken stock, vegetable stock, whatever you want to do. I got probably a cup and a half, two cups to start with. I'll save a little bit just so I can thin it out if it ends up being over thick. Bring it to a boil and it's going to thicken and you can just continue to reduce it down to the thickness you want. And once it reduces, you want to start tasting it for salt and pepper. Make sure you got it. So after a few minutes want. on the boil, the sauce is going to get nice and thick. You can continue to boil it or simmer it. And it's going to uh, continue to thicken a little bit. You want to taste it. If needed, this one can use a little bit of salt and a touch of pepper. You can also, you know, take this time at the very end, add a little bit more parsley or add a little bit of parsley. You can also, you know, hit it with maybe even a little bit of port or whiskey or something like that for a little bit of spike. That would absolutely be awesome. So after about 30 minutes in the oven, my uh, meatloafs have reached the internal temperature I'm looking for, 150. They're done. Perfectly good. You want to let them rest for just a couple minutes before we, uh, before we slice into them. Let's go ahead and serve up our mushroom sauce. Like I said, I'm doing mine with a little bit of, uh, what am I doing it with? A mini meatloaf. I'll go ahead and put mine on the bottom. And then if you're like me, why not grab the whole meatloaf? Throw it right on there. Maybe a little big for a portion size, but I'm kind of a big guy. Absolutely delicious, super tender, and you're gonna love it. I'll see you next time on No Recipe Required. you saw something you liked, hope you tried this recipe. If so, throw us up in the comments, let me know how it turned out. And you know what? I put videos up every week, sometimes twice a week. If you want to subscribe, go ahead, click this little button right here, it should be somewhere around my fingers. And um, you'll get updates when I post new videos, you can comment, you can enjoy, we can all learn to cook better. I'll see you next time.